Hey, what's going on, everybody? You're watching DualShockers.com. We're here at PAX East 2014, day three. We're all getting a little tired. We're towards the finish line, but yeah. we're hanging out here with Supergiant Games. Greg, the creative director on Transistor, um, a game that's kind of at the finish line now. You guys are yeah. excited. You're, you know, what, a month, a little bit over a month away. Yeah, it's, uh, I think uh, we can hardly believe it ourselves still, but yeah, we just announced the game is coming May 20th uh, to PlayStation 4 and PC. Uh, so yeah, here we are showing like a near final build running on the final PS4 hardware and letting people get their hands on it. Exciting. I, I got a chance. We kind of played, uh, the, it seems like, the very beginning of the game to yeah. give you give you a taste of what, it, what it's like. You know, you get kind of thrown in, get taught on a couple things. You have a, a raspy voice that's whispering in your ear, yeah. telling you a story. A lot of great elements there. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we, we like to kind of push people in uh, at the deep end of our stories a little bit just to just to get them playing as soon as possible and kind of like let the story kind of uh, soak in a little bit uh, rather than just like putting a lot of preamble up front because uh, yeah we, we think it's all about getting the person playing kind of immediately and and learning learning the whole thing kind of basking in it and it was a, it was a great experience because it wasn't like you ever felt overwhelmed you know there was enough in there where you're just kind of navigating kind of getting a feel for things so let's back up a little bit. I know, you know, obviously you guys did Bastion. We got Transistor now. Is there a tie between the two? How does Transistor kind of fit in? Yeah, it does. Well, we really wanted Transistor to have its own distinct identity. Like the only uh, the only tie is like kind of indirect in that um, Bastion was our kind of weird fantasy frontier world, and we really loved like making the world of that game from scratch. And it, and thankfully it got a really good response and put us in a position to make another game. So we thought like, what if we could. Let's see if we could do this again. So, like, if Bastion was our take on fantasy, we wanted to see what we could do in more of a science fiction direction this time around. Uh, and then, from a gameplay standpoint, we were really interested in like uh, having like a more kind of thoughtful and deliberate moment-to-moment -moment pacing. So we kind of put in this strategic planning mode that, that you played around with, where. Um, we, we wanted to have this kind of built-in sense of drama, these moments where the fast action can be kind of interrupted by the player, where you kind of call a timeout, uh, decide what you're going to do next, and then watch the plan unfold. You know, sometimes it goes exactly as you want. Other times, maybe it doesn't go quite as planned, and we think those moments can be kind of exciting. And, and I got to say, that that moment, I wasn't even expecting it. It, cool, it yeah. kind of snuck up on me. I'm like, oh, all of a sudden we're in a real time, uh, yeah. you know, a real time strategy moment. And what I liked about it was it never it never took you out of it. It kind right. of gave you more of an oh crap moment, like, oh, something's going to happen right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we got to really kind of think about this. This isn't just a hack and slash, beat him up. Let's let's strategize. Let's see how many guys I can take out with one move. Exactly. And then I, I saw you guys have um, the powers that are in there as well. Yeah. And you could kind of start chaining those together exactly. and setting up different strategies. So, I know uh, how far did you guys kind of go down that route? Yeah. So we think we went uh, really far down that route. Uh, now that now that you mentioned it, because that's something like uh, the the game. You know. A big part of what's important to us about the game is that you you've got this like mysterious and kind of extraordinary weapon. We we wanted it to we wanted the player to constantly feel like uh, we wanted you to constantly feel like you're discovering new things that it could do, and that meant having lots and lots of different power combinations and like different things that you could do with it. So you uh, you experienced a little bit uh, of what the system is like, but basically you can like mix and match the different powers to form new uh, uh, kind of power combinations. There are literally like thousands of these combinations possible in the game, so we think we're going to find people playing this game in really, really different ways, especially when you combine that with how open-ended the kind of uh, the planning mode function is. You can play a lot of this game in real time uh, if you prefer, and but some people you know, play it more like a strategy game. Some people use that mode uh, just kind of for clutch situations to get out of a bad situation. We really like uh, to see people playing it in different ways and we're seeing a lot of that here so a, a lot of replayability which is great you know that's 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 as a gamer that's what we all want yeah. we, we don't want to be forced down one way yeah at least for myself i want to make decisions i want to find out that hey that guy did it in a wrong way because i did it my right, way right 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 no that's exactly it for us uh, for sure we like to like like when you level up in this game it's not just about like getting more strength and hit points or whatever we it's more about like opening up lots and lots of options where you can just uh, configure the transistor in lots of different ways and and discover uh, play styles that are hopefully just like kind of just right for you or, or or surprise you in other ways stuff like that and, and play style aside visually look I kind of blew me away a little bit. Looked Thanks. really nice. Thank you. you know, the character model, there's 
the, the, the weapon she's carrying, she, you can almost feel the weight because she's dragging it around, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, until she gets into these moments where she breaks out her powers. You know, it, it's those little things where you're like, man, this, this, you guys took some time to make Thank sure you. it looks on point. Thank you very much. Yeah, we, uh, we have definitely, you, you know, the atmosphere of the game is really important to us. So we think those small details really matter and we try to kind of cram in as many of those as we could. So hopefully it all comes across. And, and now, how important was the voice acting for you guys? Because it seems like that's almost like a very pivotal, you, the, the story's kind of being told not via the main character, because if I'm not mistaken, she loses her voice. Correct. There's yeah. another voice kind of guiding her through this world. Yeah, so the, vo the voice is, uh, uh, is uh, cr really crucially important to us from that point of view. Um, we, uh, we, it's really important to us to, to deliver the story of this game in a way that's kind of only possible through games, um, and that means having this uh, this character is kind of along for the ride, uh, responding to the events of the story as they occur. But he's kind of her her partner in crime. There, she's she's quite literally you know lugging him around, um, and she, as you said, she, her voice has been taken from her as part of the backstory of this game. Whereas he's reduced to kind of only a voice, and we like the idea of this uh, this kind of partnership between these characters. Uh, and he's there to kind of. Uh, you know, he provides so, uh, a lot of narrative context, also provides, I'd say, a little emotional support, yeah. as it were, kind of helping you through the situation, uh, guiding you along uh, to some extent, but but really just kind of supporting you in the in the actions that you take. Um, and uh, he's he's one of the ways in which you'll be able to learn much more about what's going on, about the setting and everything. Uh, it sounds great. You know, it, it's almost creepy having this person whispering in my <laughs> ear, telling me that, but it's a cool creepy, like, yeah. oh, where are you? Why are you telling me this? So it was very, very cool. Now you guys, it's going to be PS4 and PC yeah. um, launching in May. Now we were talking a little bit. You guys kind of made a, a conscious effort, said we're we're going to stick to the that, that that those platforms. Oh, that that's yeah. I mean that that's our entire focus for right now. Uh, my 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 joke is that May 20th for us is like the end of the Mayan calendar. Like we have no plans beyond that because all that matters to us is the successful launch of this game, and then from there we'll we'll see how it goes. There, uh, there might not be a May 21st, but there will be a transition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there will, there will indeed, yes. Good deal, Greg. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Guys, Transistor is looking great, sounding great, playing great. May 20th is uh, right around the corner, so mm -hmm. I hope that probably stays, uh, stays intact. Thank you. PAX East 2014, we're out.